just all the pus coming out now. Just putrid evil being expelled. Today is a lovely day in between the Canada holiday of Canada Day and the weekend. So it's a little bit chaotic. We had a few people off. So Dr. Carling is off and Stacy is off. So we brought in some amazing locums. Yolanda, who is a veterinarian, and Cherish, who is a locum uh, veterinary technologist. And then Vlad also came in today, our veterinary student. So we have a lot of new crew today uh, just helping out and getting the day done. And then because it is almost the, the weekend it has been very wild many walk-ins many emergency call-ins so we've just been scrambling dogs that are limping and ear infections and abscesses and it is just a, a regular day at a busy vet clinic and I feel like we could use 10 more people my daughter said she vomited and it was just a couple kibbles in her vomit okay yesterday morning I noticed that she was having a hard time pooping Okay. So I figured maybe she's just constipated, I'll get some pumpkin. It's the vomiting more yeah. so that concerns me for blockage, but you know, we call this hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. So and then sometimes it's bacterial, sometimes it's a parasite, sometimes well, she eats like dog poop. And yeah. <laughs> so if she eats poo, if she eats stuff that could just upset her tummy, that could be it. You know, Honestly, what I think we should do is probably do a little bit of supportive care. I think she would do really well if we put her on some IV fluids, okay. give her some medication for vomiting, some antibiotics IV so she gets better. Like obviously there's a lot of blood in there. Okay. And then I think we should run x-rays. Just make sure that there's nothing okay. obvious. If things look pretty normal, then we just Play by awesome. ear and see how she does over the day. Come at four if I don't call you. Okay. Awesome. Thank All right. You. You're very welcome. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Like her physical exam, other than the drooling, is pretty pretty normal. I mean, obviously there's blood in the stool, but she's very stable. And then the girls are gonna put her on IV fluids and give her good medication for nausea and see how that goes. In a puppy, like in a young dog, like. Her fully vaccinated, that has history of getting into the garbage, getting into the cat poo, getting into everything under the sun. Um, it could be just dietary indiscretion, just something that upset her tummy. However, it could also be an obstruction, you know, of the stomach, uh, in the stomach or the gastrointestinal tract. So we just want to make sure that that's not the case. She could also have a parasite or bacteria. So right now we're not, because she's quite stable and she seems to be a little bit of a troublemaker, we're not gonna necessarily worry too much on what it is. We're just gonna treat the symptoms and just make her feel better. And if that doesn't work, then that's when I go in and try to find exactly what's happening. Jody, can you take also some blood just to have it there before we, you know, hydrate her. Absolutely. We'll give her two different medications. One is an anti-nausea medication. The other is an antibiotic. She looks so much better, brighter, and she's not drooling anymore. So, Luna, Sermenia is working. Yes. Just fluids, they go a long way. White fawns and weaver dogs. Is it gonna be in the webisode? I don't know, we'll get sued already. Yeah. <laughs> right away. <laughs> What are you up to now, Cody? Should I follow you? Um, uh, sure. Just vaccinating this boxer. His name's Hercules. He's nine and he's beautiful. And he is due for his rabies and kennel cough. And then we're also gonna deworm him. And uh, other than that, he's perfectly healthy. Just gonna go to the mouth. There we go. And then this is your dewormer to take home, okay? okay? So you just do that tomorrow. It's just a beef flavored chew. Right, other than that, we're good. Great, thank you. No, no problem. If this is exactly what a scammer would write, oh my goodness, I'm dying, almost choked, the zombie popsicle. <laughs> that looks like a scammy thing. I have determined that if we are ever in zombie apocalypse, popsicle? Anyways, zombie popsicle. If we are in the zombie popsicle, what is going to happen is I'm going to be the first one to go. And I will tell you why.
Milo is a three-year-old kitty that has been shaking his ears for the last six months. Sometimes when he shakes, there's fluid coming out of it. So I did a quick exam and everything looks good. There doesn't seem to be anything in his ears. So we're just gonna do a deeper look. Pretty much I'm searching for, you know, inflammation of the ear canal, maybe a polyp or something that could be causing discomfort. It is a little gunky, you can yeah. see. Oh yeah. <laughs> so let's grab some gauze and some swabs. Sometimes he has discharge from an infection, so we're gonna check that as well, make sure he doesn't have an infection. His ear canal is quite crusty and there are some chunks in there, so we're gonna clean that. We're gonna look at this ones, like this swabs under the microscope and make sure he doesn't have any infection or confirm it. And then depending on what's going on, we'll treat it. A lot of these kitties will have ear infections because they have allergies, either allergies to the food or their environment. So we today we'll take care of this, which is what's bothering him, but uh, we already talked, the owner and I have talked about, uh, you know, potential food diet, like a diet trial, just to make sure that we diagnosed, like if he has food allergies, we'll, we'll take care of that, and then we'll chat about, you know, environmental allergies and referral to dermatology, if necessary. All right, this little cutie uh, presented for a swelling behind the ear. Uh, so we have just shaved it and we're gonna take a needle and poke and see what we can find. Good girl, baby. Okay. Abscess. So we got purulent material there. Brown, smelly. So now we're gonna open it up and take all of the evil out. Just all the pus coming out now. Just putrid evil being expelled. So now we're gonna flush it and uh, maybe open it up a little bit more. See if there's any foreign bodies in there. But uh, yeah, that's a big abscess for a little doggy. We're just gonna flush the saline and then we'll uh, explore the wound a little bit just to make sure there's no chunky bits left. So just he's just probing. probing through the abscess to see how far the pocket goes and if there's any foreign material in there. So she had a history of a, um, a bite wound a year ago. So from that, there could be like a broken tooth or something left in there that would cause it to re-abscess or it could not be related at all. Okay, we'll just do a bit more flush. I'll put in some iodine. And just leave it open and put in some antibiotics. Give you a little bath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Church, could you get us a towel? There's some right around the corner. Wrapped up now month two at FenVet. Things have been better than I could have ever dreamed and the customers are loving it. The team is growing and we'll keep on going. <laughs>